नमस्कार वेलकम टू दी सेकेंड डेज लाइव कॉन्फ्रेंसिंग ऑन स्वयं प्रभा चैनल ट्वेंटी फॉर टूडे सेशन आई एम सी आर के मूर्ति वन ऑफ द टीम मेंबर ऑफ एन जी पी पी डी पी टीम फ्रॉम द इंदिरा गांधी नेशनल ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी एंड फॉर टूडे सेशन वी हैव ए रिसोर्स पर्सन माई कोलीग प्रोफेसर सुदीप रंजन झा who is a senior faculty member at igno and is a professor of physics in the school of sciences at indira gandhi national open university uh, apart from his uh, expertise in the physics discipline which is his discipline uh, he is actively taking part in the corporate life of indira gandhi national open university and then uh, former member of the board of management of indira gandhi national opportunity board of management is the highest policy decision making body of the university and naturally when we requested him to join us for this uh, session as a resource person uh, we want to tap his corporate experiences in the university uh, along with his uh, discipline based knowledge so he kindly accepted and joined us uh, professor ja i welcome you for this session mm -hmm. friends uh, i think before i hand it over to professor ja i want to inform him there are few questions which have already come i think uh, one or two colleagues asked that what is uh, uh, academic bank of credit is there any ugc listed the academic comp courses for the academic etc these are the questions uh, nothing to worry uh, professor ja will address all those issues apart from that after his presentation if there are few more questions we will certainly take it up uh, and so once again i welcome you all the for all the colleagues from different parts of the country to this session and then i welcome him uh, professor ja again and i will hand it over the session to professor ja thank you thank you professor murthy and uh, good afternoon to all our viewers uh, across the length and breadth of the country uh welcome to this program and today is the second day of live conferencing session with all our uh, participants i will not call you students because we are all colleagues and i have been told that uh, uh, in this first batch around 6000 plus teachers from across the country from university systems colleges are participating in this one week program and uh, it's a very timely initiative taken by uh, indira gandhi national open university as uh, some of you may be aware igno has a dedicated discipline the dedicated division so to say in stride called stride which specializes in uh, training and capacity building of teachers and other functionaries of odl institutions as well as teachers at large now coming uh, to today's uh, discussion and deliberations uh, i have formatted it like this uh, that i will touch upon a few issues related to national education policy 2020 and then uh, as you must have accessed that entire courseware for this one week training program is already uploaded in the form of self learning units as well as a good repository of video programs so the topic i am going to uh, generate discussion around is already there in one of the videos of the courseware for this program so i will just uh, initiate certain issues which i think are important for teachers to start thinking about and discussing about among themselves so let me begin with certain salient sentences from national education policy uh, that is uh, in the very first slide of my presentation this is not my framing of the issues this is simply taking certain important sentences and statements from the national education policy the first is that uh, nep envisions the complete restructuring of our higher education institution be it universities and colleges that is captured in the sentence which is says that we now are at such a juncture in the development of higher education system in our country that there is a need to develop higher education institution into multidisciplinary universities now to contextualize this concept of multidisciplinary universities you will know 
that I am very sure that majority of the participants will be coming from uh, college systems, uh, so to say, and some university systems. The colleges are more or less in our country unitary in the science in the sense that uh, someone is teaching science, some colleges are teaching commerce, some colleges are teaching arts, and likewise in other professional areas. The whole idea is that this system of silos working in isolated uh, unidirectional uh, direction in terms of disciplines is not going to help students of 21st century. That is one presumption. Now that presumption can be debated. That's a different debate. But the whole idea of today's interaction is, and I would like you to raise issues, we can discuss it, that this is one of the major recommendations. Therefore, under, underlying this assumption is the recommendation that we now need to move towards large multidisciplinary universities. That is one recommendation. Second is that how to go about it, how you are going to convert HEIs into large multidisciplinary universities. There, the recommendation is that by transforming higher education institutions into large multidisciplinary universities, colleges and HEI clusters and knowledge hub, hubs. So these are the three categories. Now university is well known that most of the universities are multidisciplinary in the sense that we have departments across the uh, disciplines coming from science, social sciences, humanities and professional education. Colleges not so much. Most of the colleges are single discipline. Here I am talking of discipline in the sense of area. Some universities and some colleges and some teachers have notions that discipline is a synonym of subject. But let us broaden it and then talk about arts, science and college, co uh, commerce. So colleges fall into that category. There are very less number of colleges where all the three streams are existing together in terms of student and faculty. And in that case, this is completely missing, which is talking of HEI clusters and knowledge hubs. I will come to it later. Third is that being a teacher, we have to locate and ourselves in this broad three category of universities, which is envisioned in NEP. That is, one category of universities will be research intensive universities. Second category of universities will be called teaching intensive universities. And third category of institutions will be autonomous degree granting colleges. Now, autonomous degree granting colleges will have all the powers and functions which normally universities uh, take up for the colleges, whether they are constituent or affiliating. So these are major uh, policy recommendations regarding restructuring the entire a spectrum of higher education system in the country. Then uh, over the period of time, every college develop into either an autonomous degree granting colleges or a constituent college of university. This comes from the fact that this policy document tells us that this uh, notion of affiliated college is going to go in the coming years. Now the time frame is typically 10 to 15 years. The policy recognizes the fact that such radical change in the structure of HEIs cannot be achieved overnight. So they have given a time frame over which they expect that this affiliated college's uh, entity has to go out of the scene from HEI uh, type of structures. Similarly, they are saying that single stream HEIs will be phased out over time and will move towards becoming vibrant multidisciplinary institutions or parts of vibrant multidisciplinary HEI. Now these are terms, let me explain it by way of giving you some examples. I am sitting in Indira Gandhi National University, I am a faculty in School of Sciences here. Our university is a, a very good example of what NEP envisages as multidisciplinary HEIs. Just for, for your information's sake, let me inform you that this university in a single campus houses 21 schools of studies and most of the schools are accommodating large number of disciplines. So if you 
want to meet a teacher of a discipline out of around 40 plus disciplines in a single campus, that campus is IGNU. In terms of conventional system, if you, I give you an example, then uh, offhand JNU comes to my mind. Most of the central universities come to my mind and Delhi University comes to my mind. But there is a difference. All these university departments are catered to run for master's program and research degree programs. And the focus of NEI is to make a radical change in the curriculum and the style of teaching and the content being offered to students at the undergraduate level. So that way, IGNU is again very uniquely placed because most of the central universities do not run undergraduate programs. They are essentially uh, engaged in master's and research degree programs. And lastly, as I said, that this whole notion of affiliated colleges is going to go. So now these piece of information are taken straight away from this 63 page, very precise and concise document called National Education Policy. I'm very sure as one of the additional resources in this uh, uh, six days program of NEPCPD, uh, you must have access to national education policy and please find time to go through them so that you get an idea and start thinking that where you are located, where your institution is located in the whole scheme of things which is to come in future as envisaged in NEP. Now, this is the context on, in which I am going to now talk on these uh, three broad issues. I think it's, it has frozen, it's not moving, PPT. Can you go to the next PPD, please? Yeah, hold it. Thank you. No, no, no. That's right. Thank you. So uh, today I'm going to touch upon these three aspects and it is already covered in the video I told you earlier. One is that uh, multidisciplinary higher education. Second, I will touch upon the credit framework, the concept of credit. And third, I will talk about academic banks of credit. Now, uh, the next thing is, what is multidisciplinary higher education? Now, if you zero in and consider about your uh, undergraduate uh, students and curriculum, then you can ask these three questions. What is it? Why do we need it? And how to go about it? Now, what is it is a very uh, lucidly explained in the NEP document, as well as there are many documents which has come from UGC as draft document that what will be the structure of this multidisciplinary higher education, particularly tailored to our undergraduate programs. It says that, simply put, it essentially says that whether a student is pursuing arts, science, or commerce, or for that matter, engineering, medical sciences, teacher education, all kinds of professional degrees at undergraduate level, Presently, the structure is to give them deeper knowledge of one area of a study and that is considered not very good because the graduates coming out of this system of education are not uh, enabled or not competent to solve the real life problems, problems of 21st century because this kind of education system has a strong limitation that you cannot think beyond your area of study. That is one limitation they want to overcome by introducing multidisciplinary higher education. Secondly, what they say that uh, apart from giving subject and discipline based knowledge, there is a requirement that uh, the graduates of our higher education institution have certain life skills, certain value-based courses, certain immersive experience of the work of work, world of work where they are likely to go after they graduate. So those components have to be made 
part and parcel of the curriculum of undergraduate programs, which is presently missing at most of the colleges and universities. That is the second objective. And third is that uh, don't ask a student at, at a little premature age of passing out plus two to take a very important decision of his or her life. That is, whether I want to pursue sciences, any professional degree course, whether it is engineering, medical, law, management, and whatnot, or uh, I want to explore a bit before I take a final call. So that the thinking is that it is presently, it's too early. We are asking people to take a call about what they want to have education in the area. So that flexibility has to be ingrained in the undergraduate program. I will come to that a little later to explain you how that has been uh, proposed to be inbuilt. The second is that why do we need it? I have touched upon some of the uh, issues why we need higher uh, this kind of multidisciplinary education. Here, if you go through the NEP document, they have listed certain limitations of existing HEI uh, curriculum or HEI system. That is, first and foremost, is a severely fragmented higher education ecosystem. As I told you, that we essentially have science colleges, arts colleges, commerce colleges that they want to do away with and move towards multidisciplinary university and colleges. Even colleges are supposed to go multidisciplinary. So that is a huge ambitious uh, you know, uh, uh, recommendation in the sense that for the university system, it is just a matter of you know, starting undergraduate program. But the college system to becoming multidisciplinary is a huge challenge and therefore the timeline has been given accordingly 10 to 15 years where colleges has to move into that direction. Second is that rigid separation of disciplines which with early specialization and streaming of a student into narrow area of study. I just discussed that we ask the students little early in their career to make a choice for their life. So that has to be done away with, give them some breathing space when they are doing graduation, interacting with peers in a different, relatively uh, free environment. College and university environments are little free compared to any school, whether it is government school or public school. So people come to uh, face to face with the life situations and peer interaction more intimately with people from diverse backgrounds. So give them some time to take a call that what they ultimately want to specialize and go in. Third is less emphasis on development of cognitive skills and learning outcomes. This is a new addition. It is a buzzword. As you may be aware, even uh, UGC has come out with this uh, learning outcome based curriculum modifications. The, most of the university in, and colleges have undertaken this and they have revisited their curriculum to explicitly mention that what are the learning outcomes, how are the expected learning outcomes out of the course the student is going to pursue. And third, last, I mean, I have listed only few, it's not only relevant to uh, today's talk, limited teacher and institutional autonomy. That I will come again when they, I talk about autonomous degree granting colleges. So how does it, uh, uh, why multidisciplinary higher education? These are some of the features uh, which uh, can be uh, assigned the, towards the benefit of multidisciplinary higher education, again, focused towards undergraduate programs, enhances adaptability to changing demands of the job market. If you have experience of a variety of disciplines, a few courses from different diverse areas, then at later on, even if you are not pursuing a particular area, but you get a hang of the subject. So in future job market or in your future life, you come across some situation which demands skills of that discipline, then you will not find yourself an alien in that situation. You have some background and you can, of course, build on that and take up the challenges you face either as your job situation or in your life condition. Second benefit of multidisciplinarity is opens up new area of knowledge for students and teachers and keep them relevant for the society in uh, 
management in engineering for example when there is interaction happens if the same campus is having uh, btech i mean uh, case in point is uh, iits most of the iits have now started their mba programs also so it ensures that the faculty and students are on the same campus right and both these stream students and faculty are uh, not struggling but exploring uh, new emerging problems and trying to find out solutions right so it happens that if the campus accommodates both a student and teacher community of these two areas then they can be of mutual help to solve the problem at hand whether it is the problem of engineering or a problem of management so that is one benefit to have a multidisciplinary higher education institution third is it creates it gives rise to new discipline for example 30 40 i mean 50 years back uh, i i'm not very sure about the timelines but uh, when we were uh, students around 30 35 40 years back the, these were not recognized as full fledged disciplines for example women studies gender and development energy studies public policy these are now establishing itself as an independent discipline now if you go through the background of what is the content and what is the um, uh, what is the transaction in terms of teaching learning in all these area you will find that it is a, a combination of many traditional disciplines and that interaction between disciplines has given rise to new disciplines which are becoming more and more relevant and important for the society so these are issues on which a person having background of more than one discipline can only address single traditional discipline based expertise may not be able to address issues emerging out of this and the last but the not the least is encourage application of knowledge for addressing the challenges faced by the society because the whole idea is that when you graduate and go to the world of work and be, be a responsible citizen of the society you come across many situations whether it is work related or your life related where this kind of diverse uh, knowledge base which you have gained while you are graduating will help you tackle them face them better now coming to now narrowing down to how we want to go about it right supposing now i i can visualize that uh, one of the participants is located in uh, let's say science college uh, being a man of science it comes naturally to me now uh, you want to make your uh, undergraduate program multidisciplinary where you want to incorporate courses from humanities and social sciences and maybe some computer related courses maybe some uh, commerce related courses so how uh, you you will be at a loss because your uh, college does not have departments you only have science departments right and the demand and the vision of nep is that here i have written let us uh, now talk in terms of semester system these are the new things which now most of the universities and colleges are familiar with a 3 year undergraduate program is supposed to have 6 semesters so multidisciplinary undergraduate program in the first 3 semesters a student is without any specification for whether he wants to go for bsc or ba or bcom in the first 3 semesters all students of undergraduate program will have to necessarily take courses including the discipline courses of their interest all major areas of learning such as natural sciences social sciences humanities mathematical and computational thinking and analysis creative expressions vocational education etc so in the first 3 semester you are exposed to all streams of knowledge which is there available for undergraduates now once you are done with first three semesters you develop liking some interest and aptitude to pursue a particular area of study and then you take a call and pick up more courses in that area whether it is science or within science also you can go for specialization in physics chemistry mathematics same holds true for arts 
so you got almost one and a half year to take a decision that what is the area which interests you more to pursue your graduation because ultimately your degree will be decided by the type of courses you pick up in the remaining three semester that is semester four five and six so uh, therefore the first issue is addressed and second issue is also addressed even if you suppose you are pursuing finally in fourth fifth semester you are pursuing history honors or sociology honors but your compulsory attendance in the courses of natural sciences humanities mathematical and computational thinking and analysis creative expressions will be a huge advantage to you when you enter your actual life or world of work so that basic foundation is there and in later at some point in time you decide to switch then you will not be switching to a new area without any clue that what does it entail so it you will be in a better position to take an informed decision in so far semester 7 and 8 are concerned these are uh, the part of the envisaged four year undergraduate program nep says that ultimately the preferred undergraduate will be four year with the possibility of exiting after three years with undergraduate certificate fourth year is more or less tailored for those students who want to pursue higher education which ultimately leads to research and all that one more point before i go to the next topic is that see this nep although it does not say anywhere in so many words but what it is saying is that uh, look let undergraduate program be a terminal degree for majority of students who just want to be an informed and educated graduate and enter the life nep in a so many words again not very explicitly but very emphatically says the way they have envisioned their higher studies leading to research they say that let only those come for research higher studies that is masters and research degree program who are truly interested who have a true aptitude and if the numbers are low and the quality of intake in higher education is good then government is ready to fund them as on date although we will not accept it as on date it's a no it's a natural thing that after graduation people look for admission to masters degree program irrespective of the fact that whether they really interested are really interested in going for higher studies which can lead to a uh, specialized research area or teaching profession and things like that where you become a lifelong learner in a relatively narrow area whether it is a discipline or a multidisciplinary new emerging area so in a sense nep says that let us consider that majority of our student population for them undergraduate is a terminal degree so if someone is not going to study further let us equip him or her with all the necessary information and analytical skills so that he can face the world of work or life with a better confidence and well equipped so that is the whole idea then the this four year undergraduate programs makes more sense as you can see that what are the type of courses they will study if they pursue four year uh, degree program if they decide to do fourth year also instead of taking an exit after three years with undergraduate certificate it says that it will have advanced disciplinary interdisciplinary courses research methodology courses and research project so essentially they are saying that let only those uh, pursue this who are really interested to know the subject more and interested in research and teaching career so that is the whole idea and the majority of them will exit so even if they exit they don't miss out on anything except for the fact that 
no advanced knowledge in a very narrow discipline based area will be available to them and nep says that as such there is no need to give so much of dense uh, discipline based con uh, content at a very uh, uh, dense manner in a large volume for a graduate because you never know what will be his ultimately requirement when he enters the job market or enters the actual life now that is about multidisciplinary i will spend 5 minutes on this uh, credit framework although nep does not uh, mention this credit uh, concept as such but as you know we in ignu are familiar with this and with uh, cbcs coming into place in 2016 or 14 or so mid large number of universities not all they are also now familiar cbcs is the first uh, uh, conceptual structure which has come to university system where university degrees has also been creditized now in a uh, loosely saying in terms of content because i am not sure that uh, participants are all from odl institution for odl institutions ignu was the pioneer in defining what one credit means but now the agreed upon definition of credit in terms of the content load is that 15 hours of classroom teaching suppose a course is taught in 15 hours one hour lecture each right over a semester then it is the content is says that the student is has earned one credit if he or she passes the examination now coming to this uh, what is the credit weightage of a particular undergraduate program on that also ugc has come out with a draft framework which says that undergraduate program will be of roughly 18 to 20 credits per semester which work out to be around 120 credits for undergraduate program of 3 years and similarly if you multiply it accordingly it will be 160 credits for 4 year undergraduate program so typically coming to the semester system it will be from anything from 18 to 20 credit uh, worth of courses per semester for an undergraduate program that will be the overall uh content load of an undergraduate program now uh to incorporate as i told you that in the first three semester students are supposed to take courses from variety of areas natural sciences humanities social sciences these are the type of courses which nep envisages and this has been taken from a document which is a draft document circulated by ugc uh in order to implement this multidisciplinary higher education uh as envisaged in nep ugc has come out with broadly these uh, four five types of courses which must find place in any undergraduate program uh to be offered by universities and colleges discipline specific courses will consume almost 50% of the credit so in a 120 credit program discipline specific courses will be roughly of 60 credits then vocational and skill courses are also going to be a compulsory component of undergraduate program some part of this has been already incorporated in the structure of ugc under cbcs they have made skill courses compulsory for irrespective of the stream whether science arts or commerce and third is uh, that is a new feature which has come from nep these abbreviation stands for life skill courses environmental studies value based courses and global citizenship education now these are uh, new terms and i will not devote much time on this to explain what does it mean it essentially means that this goes beyond the uh, traditional discipline based knowledge and environment is also again made a compulsory component of a undergraduate program by ugc across the universities value based course, uh, uh, courses and life skill courses are new courses on which also ugc has uh, circulated a list that what are the areas which will fit in this category of courses and you have to have around 16 credit courses in the undergraduate program and the fourth is i, I was telling you that at the undergraduate level a student must have have experience of the world of work it can be in the form of field projects internship or apprenticeship these are going to be a, 
compulsory component of all undergraduate programs here when i am talking of undergraduate program i am not limited to science undergraduate program it's these suggestions are for across the areas arts science and commerce and the credit weight is there is given around 20 credits worth of field work internship and apprenticeship and the fourth is again dedicated to only people who are pursuing the fourth year for them doing a research project is one of the requirement to get a four year degree undergraduate degree with research or and honors now uh, the third thing is abc that is academic bank of credit this is a very explicitly mentioned and elaborately discussed in uh, nep document academic bank of credit essentially means that if i have earned certain i have passed certain courses and those courses carried certain credits right and for one reason or the other i had to discontinue my education in between after doing one year of graduation i had to discontinue or after doing two years i had to discontinue there can be many reasons let's not go into the reasons right now the idea here is that whatever effort a student has made in passing those subjects that should not go waste let us create a bank where the student can credit those credits i mean these two credits are different first credit is the banking credit i deposit let me put it like this i deposit my earned credits in my academic bank right and as and when i join back god willing if i get an opportunity to come back to the higher education institution and complete my degree which i had to leave for a reason then i can encash those accumulated credit in my academic bank to complete my degree i don't have to redo those courses those courses once again there are many conditions and the course must be valid i mean you can't uh, deposit a credit and come after 20 years right so in 20 years time all the courses and all the programs completely get revamped so the life cycle of the course is there it is roughly, roughly around 7 years you can have your credits earned and deposited and you can encash those credits within a period of 7 years of earning those credits so this is a very very noble idea in the sense that in our country which is very diverse and it's not uh, privileged to one and all to complete uh, 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 higher education in a time bound manner there are many life situation where you have to quit in between that is one to not not let uh, students effort go waste second is that it gives a, a flexibility to a student in terms of mobility suppose there is a relocation of your family or your yourself because of one reason or the other so that credit and that academic bank is valid across the country and the operational part is that most of the universities are supposed to register on a centralized academic bank created by uh, ministry of education where their respective students can deposit their credits and then they produce their passbook to some other institution where they are joining and then they can encash those credits that is the whole idea it will enhance the mobility and third is that facilitate multi dimensional multidisciplinary higher education this is this is very important particularly for those of you who are coming from unitary colleges whether it is arts college or commerce college suppose your college takes a call and plans to start a multidisciplinary higher education where you want your student to take up courses from some courses from science some courses from humanities and social sciences some courses from computer but you don't have a department because you are a arts college so here this academic bank of credit is of great help now a large number of organizations are coming out with uh, uh, courses where students can enroll online and they can get a certification that they have completed a course which is worth this much of credit so if your college curriculum takes cognizance of such kind of courses which are not available in your college then you can always ask your students to do these courses from 
such online course offering platforms case in point is swayam is one such platform run by government of india it is a repository of large number of courses anybody can join and pass the examination and get the certification so this is going to facilitate those colleges which are still not multidisciplinary higher education institution as such so in the intervening period till your college evolves into a kind of multidisciplinary higher education institution be it university or a autonomous degree granting college your students should not be deprived from gaining uh this multi multidisciplinary undergraduate or postgraduate education academic bank of credit is going to facilitate that also and third is that uh, uh, these are the operational details that how does it uh, this scheme works a scheme operates like a bank you deposit money in a city let's say delhi and you can withdraw that money in city let's let's say kanyakumari provided the bank has a branch there so that that is the way a bank operate you can deposit anywhere cash and withdraw cash anywhere same is true for uh, credits earned by a student he or she can uh, deposit as well as in cash from the academic bank and for that as i told you all hcis are supposed to registered in this abc scheme of government of india and your college your institution has to identify which are the courses which are not available in your college but you are willing to make them part of your curriculum undergraduate multidisciplinary higher education curriculum then you have to find out those courses and recognize them and make your students aware that they can do these courses from these platforms till your college or university itself develops into multidisciplinary higher education institution having all these disciplines in house i think uh, i will stop uh, as of now